Gee up. Gee Gee up, everybody. We have matching ones with your name on it. I just think that's... Hey, I that's do. Perfect. You <laughs> sent it to me. It's got my name on it and everything. The Lodge at Whitefish, Montana, and it's uh, green tea. I got a Team GK film. I, I have love on mine, which is not my name, but I would like to have it as an attitude. So bless you, my dear. Cheers. Oh, good. Excellent. Hello, Graham. <laughs> oh, Faith. Good to see you, my dear. You good too. to see you. And welcome back everyone to Tea at Three. I'm Faith Schmidt, this is Graham Kerr. Uh, <laughs> so last week, Graham brought up uh, the idea um, that we've been starting to refer to as less is more, which was to go um, one step further with, um, while removing something from your diet, like we had been talking about removing meat from your diet, taking that um, budget um, that you were spending on meat, and putting that towards good elsewhere, um, somewhere else in the world where um, someone needs it. So that's what we've been thinking about this week, and we're back here today to talk about it. Do you know, um, I understand that you've actually got the sistership of this, of my, of my teacup. I ah, do, you that. sent it to me. It's got my name on it and everything. Look at that. <laughs> I think it's worth repeating, isn't it? Do you think maybe that what we're doing is is dropping an idea into each other's minds? Not we're not dropping it into the world out there, asking the world to suddenly become members with us and sweep the world with a huge movement. We are really interested in each other's opinion, and that we're giving each other a whole week to ponder an idea. And as you rightly said, what we're doing, I think it's called pay it forward. Uh, that's the kind of um, way it's described. I've always called it the double benefit because I thought if I'm, if I'm doing something to me that is either negative or neutral, for example, they, I'm sure that there are very nice cookies. Um, I used to eat six cookies a day. I, I loved the texture and the flavor and everything else of cooking until I worked out that each one were about 17 cents each. Those were in those days. Um, they're more like 20 cents each nowadays. And, um, and they, they run about 100 calories. And truly, it was a lot of refined sugar and a lot of refined starch. And I thought to myself, this is either neutral or negative with regard to my personal health. There's nothing actually nourishing about them. I enjoy them, but there's nothing nourishing. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I started to cut down on how many, I never cut them out, but I cut the volume in half. And then I started to extrapolate that over the family. Um, we had family four at that time. And what happened was as a result of, of just looking at cookies to begin with, we got to about a $720 a year change in, in our food budget. And that was enough to be able to invest in a couple of children in very underprivileged places in the world so that they could get an education and health and that sort of thing. So from that point of view, it seemed to us that we had made a change to what we did, which was neutral or negative, and turned it into something which is absolutely positive. And for us, it, it made it look like the world out there, if, 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 it, if it did anything like that, what a wonderful example that is of caring for each other. as just, human, just as humanity. So we started to do that, and that was 37 years ago. So I, I did the sums in the last week uh, just to go over it. And it's $157,000 difference that we made 37 years ago to our, to our personal lifestyle. And I just carried it forward. You know, every year it's just small. Mm -hmm. But if you add it to what went before and, 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 and then not, and take the difference in the cost of living, et cetera. And that's where it gets complicated. And the moment, I, if Trini used to say to me, you are the only person I know who could take something quite simple and make it incredibly complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really don't want to do that now. Um, 
And so I'm just interested, so interested in what you've been pondering about this idea, because I know you're on a tight budget. Mm -hmm. And you and I are both on a tight budget at the present moment. And I've been reflecting about this during the last week, but I can't wait to know what you think. Yeah, I absolutely love this idea. If I think where I came to in the end, well, this week was a little interesting because I didn't actually have the opportunity to go shopping in this week. Right. I just didn't mm -hmm. need to. And so I haven't been able to like implement the idea yet, but I loved thinking of, of these kinds of things where uh, it's easier to make changes like this when um, it's not actually a change. Like you, um, your budget stays the same regardless, you know, like you're, you're making other decisions previously, harder choices yes. that we've already talked about. Um, and being able to just maintain that same budget and then yet use the difference for, for good somewhere else. Like it's so much easier to conceptualize little good like that when it's not like a big change. Like, right. um, a couple years ago, there was a difference in, um, like the taxes changed a little bit and I ended up getting more out of my paycheck. It was like 12 or $15 a month more than I had before. And what my husband and I had decided to do with that was, um, commit that $12 a month to, um, a charity that we really liked. Uh, I don't have that anymore, but I'm excited about thinking of, uh, being able to implement that in, um, this new way of like, I've no, I've decided not to purchase a like gorgeous $36 pork shoulder. I, instead I've, <laughs> I'm purchasing this like $6, um, soy, a uh, supplement thing, you know, and taking that difference. <laughs> I think, I think by far the hardest thing for me is I am not nearly as organized as you. I, I don't <laughs> keep receipts. I barely have a budget. Every time I've made one, it lasts for like a month and then it's gone. So I have like very loose numbers uh, for my budget. Um, and most of the time, um it's just like oh we can't like my default is oh we can't afford that and so i try and only get what we need yes um but i mean we still end up like i don't know i i uh made a chocolate cake last night <laughs> so we still end okay. up with, like um treats and things like that um that that probably aren't as good for us and i yeah, I'm still excited to see like what thinking about this this week will go into, uh, you know, ordering and buying food in the future. Yeah, specifically. Yes, and I guess when I when I get back to sort of ground zero in my thinking on this one, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Now that really got my attention because if everything hangs on that statement, which, by the way, you can put into a tweet, um, it, it's short enough to get into a tweet, then I wanted to know how to live that way. It's entirely humanitarian. There's nothing religious about that at all. It was out of a religious text, but, but it, it, it can. If, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you're just a nice person, and you're doing the right thing. And my way of doing that is just simply say, I'm going to pull back a little bit of what I really like to eat, like chocolate cake. I love chocolate cake. But at the same time, the chocolate cake is neutral or negative to my personal health. And its cost can be an opportunity for me to be able to give. All right. So in this last week, I have done my homework, um, as you could imagine. And I know I'm obsessive compulsive and that uh, people don't have to behave like me. So here is my, here, here's my, th th these are my receipts from this year. 
every time I go to the store, I come back and I have got that receipt. I've got it in black and white. I know how much I spend and I know what I got for that. And if I'm not going to eat that boneless turkey breast anymore, which I'm not, then that's going to save me whatever that was. And that cost me $36.47. So I made at least a $30 differential already. That extra um, $6.47 is almost the cost of a five pound bag of stir fried vegetables, mm. which is an amazing amount of vegetables. And I've got 15 two serving portions out of that bag of vegetables. That's half the month of that. And this is what I'm going to use to replace this. So I've, I've actually got a net saving of $30. And, I, and I'm not just hypothetically doing it, I know it. I have it in black and white, all right? So what I can do with that is that $30 is, is amazing. See this? This is a newsletter from Albania. And I started in January to pray for Albania. I've just made a commitment to pray for Albania. I've never been to Albania. I knew nobody in Albania. I knew nothing about the nation. They went through an earthquake and they've been through the virus and there's all kinds of difficulty that they have there. And I found this, this small cut, this couple with a couple of kids who are in Albania passing out flour and oil to people who can't even get out to be able to, to mm. shop. They've been so locked down. They, they let one person out for one hour a day. That's it. Oh my so these, the, the government permitted this family to go deliver these packages of flour and oil to people. And I thought, oh, God, what a lovely thing to do. So I actually, there was a telephone number that I found out for them, called them, and I actually got to speak to the guy in Albania. Wow. And, um, and so yesterday I made a commitment with my $30 that I saved from not having the turkey breast to this family. I've got goosebumps as I'm telling you <laughs> about it. I'm, I hope I'm not being foolish. But quite honestly, I've been eating those mixed vegetables with a little sauce over the top of them and eating with chopsticks so that it takes me a little longer and I can, I can take each vegetable separately and savor each one. And I am not missing my meat at all. And I have been able to put my arms around a family that is loving other people in a far off country that I've never been to. If that doesn't signify that there's hope for mankind, then I really don't know what there is. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's amazing. I think if we give $30 as me, and you are looking at your budget and taking $5 from you, or whatever it is, I think it's actually going beyond our own immediate self-interest. And when we do that, then humanity is definitely on the right track. And for me to talk to you at 26 is one of the most exciting things I've ever done in my life. I need you to know that. Because I've got hope in you for the future of mankind. Because I'm gone. I'm gone, but you are definitely going to be carrying this forward. Literally. It'd be wonderful. So, there. Um, now, all, all I'd say to you at home Neither of us are wanting you to do anything special about this one, except ponder it. Because if you ponder it, then Faith and I believe that we're going a little bit beyond our, our two selves, and we would love to do that. <laughs> I can't wait. I, my lifestyle is changing so rapidly because of your ideas <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that, that I am... I'm excited about what you will come up with next. Uh, if you say get a haircut, I agree, I need one. But as a, <laughs> my daughter tells me that I should let it grow because she likes it when it's all curly at the back. So, <laughs> anyway, so what have you got in mind to, for me to ponder for the week? Yeah, so again, thank you so much, Graham, for that, all of that. Um, it's, it's a very inspiring message to hear. And I think um, coming from my 
generation and thinking of um, the generations ahead of us, I think there are times when it feels like um, generations ahead of us have given up a little bit and maybe just like decided to stick in the ways that they have found and not um, move forward. Mm -hmm. But it's good to know that there are people like you and I'm sure that there are so many more people out there that have that hope and are you know willing to to do things that that we all need to do to to spread more love around the world um and um make it a better place yes. so yeah thanks for that uh, thank you and i there are people like me there's a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. like me and we can't wait to get going and we really really need to be in compass with you um, you you really are the future, and we understand that. And we, it, we're like um, we're like we've been on this track for a long time, running with a little baton in our hands. And it's so exciting to see someone with their hand outstretched, waiting to take the baton <laughs> of life and carry it forward. That that's really special. So, so what have you got for us to ponder for the next week? Yeah. So. As I was thinking about what to bring up this week, um, like I've said a little bit before, there's a tree right outside my window that I've been um, watching this tree for the past eight months or so. And so yeah. it, it started out just sticks and then it was sticks with um, little red berries and then little red berries with little piles of snow on top. And then the snow went away and then the berries fell and it was back to sticks. And then um, right as soon as we started talking was right about the time where it started getting little green buds and then little, little green buds exploded. And now I, part of why I'm bringing this up is because I feel like it's something I can't ignore because the tree has exploded into like fluorescent pink flowers. <laughs> Like I can't okay. stop like seeing it out of the corner of my eye. Um, and so what it made me think of as I've been sitting here and, and that like this view out the window has been where I've been um, able to like slow down and contemplate the things that we've been talking about. Um, so I think what I've been thinking about with that is um, the, the way that nature and its seasons affect me. Um, I am definitely someone who needs and craves sunshine and I feel like it has a huge impact on my mood a lot of the time. Every so often I'll just be totally exhausted and then um, can't really figure out why and I'll like look outside and it's super cloudy and I'm like oh maybe <laughs> maybe it's a little bit because I'm like dampened by the clouds and um um, that was actually also part of the reason, um, in 2018, I went traveling for the winter and just chased summer. <laughs> like I, I left from our summer here, uh, in the U S to the end of, uh, summer in Greece, which was basically still our summer up here in the North part where we are. Um, and then went from there to Australia to their summer and then back here, uh, for our summer again. Um, so this last winter was... Uh, a little rough because it was uh, one I hadn't had in a while. Um, but I was thinking, um, as you had brought up, taking little um, pieces of, of uh, something that we're deciding not to purchase anymore and using that money towards good somewhere. I was thinking of where um, places that I would send that money and places where I have in the past. And um, one of them is an organization that helps um, kind of boil down uh, complicated environmental issues into a, a like just a way that we can actually digest because a lot of times governments uh, put a lot of extra words in there so that people don't really know what's going on. because they're like, we want to build this because it makes us money and we don't want to have to think about the other things. And then there'd be like, yeah. well, the other things are important. <laughs> um, um, and brings this um, organization brings that into churches and like does presentations in churches all over um, 
um, Washington specifically. Um, but that made me um, think what, what is a, see, I'm still thinking about this and I'm excited to think about it more this week, but um, what are our ways, not only that we can support um, our community, but also support the nature and what, like, I guess I, what I'm trying to think about is what reasons I have for wanting to support nature, like how it affects me. Like, I feel like yeah, I am yeah. very physically affected by nature and it's where I find like rest and happiness and I enjoy being out in it. I've, I've lived outside for months at a time. <laughs> so like, that's where I like to be. But yeah, I, I think that's, that's maybe you have initial thoughts on this. I, I still obviously need to formulate what I want to think about this too, but I think it boils down yeah. to, I want to think about how nature affects us and um, why it's important um, for me to keep it intact and keep that cir circle yes. of life uh, yeah. moving forward. Yes. So <clears throat> let's see if I've got this right you are making a contribution towards preserving nature, if you will. It's resilience, it's ability to come off with those little buds every year and blossom um, as it has. And it's so extraordinarily powerful that it has an effect. Therefore, it is worth it to you to invest in the future resilience of the planet. Right. Is that fair enough? Yeah. I agree with that completely. And at home, what Faith and I want to do is we want to, I don't know what she's going to come up with as this idea to ponder for the coming week. All I know is that I can respond immediately off the top of my head and then spend a whole week considering that more deeply. And that's what we're trying to imagine we, we will have a new knee-jerk reaction and then we will have a reaction based upon having considered it carefully for at least a week so and then come back with each other and say how we may have changed from our immediate knee-jerk reaction but let me say i went uh, for my walk and and uh, one of the cherry blossom trees was shedding its blossoms. It was a bit of a keen wind blowing at the time. And the, the, the whole air was filled with pink cherry blossoms um, falling on the pathway. And as it fell on my pathway, as I was speedily walking through this mass, this snowstorm of petals, but for a moment, I remembered what it was like for me to stand at the altar and watch my wife Trina come down the, the aisle in a ninth century church in England. Um, mm. And um, they played, you know, here comes the brine and the whole bit, you know, and there were petals being strewn on the, on the, on the pavement in front of them. And it made me think about what I felt like when I saw her coming. I can't tell. She was utterly radiant. I wasn't allowed to see her that, that day. This is the first chance I got to see a beautiful, gorgeous creature. And um, my heart was pounding. I, I was in uniform and I had a sword which was clattering in its scabbard because I was shaking at the time. Um, and um, I got to think in a funny sort of way that Jesus may look at us coming like that. And I looked down at my feet and there were the petals being strewn on the pavement in front of me as I was on my way to that encounter. It was extraordinary. And my dear, I give you 100% on this one. I'm going to go looking at every seed I've planted and my parsley is beginning to come up and my basil is beginning. This is the time of year when, when nature is so resilient. The eagle at the top of my tree over there has just had a baby eagle. We don't know whether it's male or female yet, but, but the whole community uh, ha has got the opportunity to be able to come up with a name. <laughs> so we have a male name and a female name, and we've got to supply this. And 
so that we'll know the name of the eagle. Life continues to move at its pace. And the only thing that gets in its way is us to a degree. And we don't know what an amazing gift it is. And we should get out of the way and let it be as resilient as it is. So that's my immediate reaction. And I'm going to spend the whole week observing nature. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm excited uh, I'll, about to, to, to have a sort of homework assignment to, to stare at trees. Because that's what I do all day anyway. <laughs> okay, so... That's what we'll be thinking about this week, um, how nature affect us and how we have affected it and how we can continue to affect it. So (laughs) so we'll uh, ponder as we walk around staring up at the trees um, this week and we'll get back to you next week. Um, Be sure to, uh, if you have any thoughts of your own um, that you would like to share with us, go ahead and leave a comment below and we'll make sure to keep those in mind. Um, And we'll see you next week. This has been Tea at Three. I'm Faith Schmidt. This is Graham Care. See you next week. God bless.